Well, hundreds of people in Port Sudan have demonstrated against what they call foreign interference in the weeks-long fighting. They're demanding the expulsion of the Emirati ambassador to Sudan and the UN special representative. They accuse them of supporting the paramilitary rapid support forces. And the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has called for an end to the fighting in Sudan. He warns the violence is creating a humanitarian catastrophe. Rahila Mohammed has more on the people trying to flee. After weeks of being stranded and caught up in the fighting in Sudan, these Nigerian citizens have finally made it home. Most of them are students. They were evacuated by military plane overnight to Abuja. They're relieved to have escaped the violence. I'm just hearing gunshots, which was very scary. It even shakes the houses. The vibration. You're hearing gunshots. You're hearing um, these missiles. It was very scary. It was traumatic. Others say they had to wait at the Egypt-Sudan border for days, with no option but to sleep on the streets until help arrived. We face a lot of challenges, and. And I don't want my enemies to experience what we saw, not to talk of our loved ones. They join hundreds of thousands of others trying to flee Sudan after the fighting began between the army and the powerful rapid support forces. Instability is pushing more families to leave their homes. Dozens of buses are lining up every day with evacuees looking to cross into Egypt by ferry. And drivers are risking their lives trying to get people to safety. Each long journey involves hours of waiting in crowded and hot conditions. People there are tired. They are sleeping on the streets, in the mosques and in schools in Wadi Halfa. We get them to ride the microbus and leave early in the morning like 7 a.m. We leave from the Sudanese border where they get their travel procedures done and this takes time. Aid groups, including the UN, are urging Sudan's warring factions to guarantee safe passage of much-needed relief supplies. Hospitals are at breaking point, and there's a severe shortage of basic necessities. The conflict is worsening an already dire humanitarian situation, with tens of thousands of refugees arriving in neighboring countries like Chad. For people who have left Sudan, it's a moment of relief. But for those still caught in the middle, it's a desperate situation that's getting worse by the day. Rahila Mohammed, Al Jazeera. Well, Safa Babakir is a Sudanese resident here in Doha. She was in Khartoum with her family when the fighting began, and she joined us in the studio earlier and told us about their journey out of the city. And in the route, we saw, we saw so much conflict. We saw dead bodies. We saw people that were lost, carrying everything that they owned on, on a rucksack. Um, and we saw armed forces. I learned things I never thought I should learn. Um, I learned that you should put up mattresses by the window um, to soften the blow of a bomb. So when the glass shakes, it doesn't hurt you. Um, I learned the different sounds of machinery. Um, I learned the sounds of what fighter jets sound like and the timing it takes for a bomb to drop. I would count all of these things as I would lay on the floor just praying that a stray bullet didn't hit our window. Um, we did run out of water at one point because um, electricity was cut. Water was, uh, one of the water pipes got shot by a stray bullet. Um, and I made um, the decision with my cousin to go grab water from um, a nearby store that was still opening, uh, providing services through the back door and we were shot at. It was incredibly risky to even st step outside your door. Safa Babak here with her story. Well, hundreds of people from Sudan continue to arrive in the Saudi Arabian city of Jeddah. Uh, let's cross now to Russell Soda, who's following the evacuation efforts there. And Russell, tell us what's happening. Well, now uh, a ship uh, that is called Amana is carrying nearly around 2,000 people from Port Sudan to, the, uh, to this military base, King Faisal military base in Jeddah now. And now we can see it from far away. It's expected that within 30 minutes it's going to anchor here in this, in this port and nearly 2,000 people are going to finally come to the, come to the safety. So according to the, according to the um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here 
it's not only Sudanese nationals. There are, there, there are people from uh, many of the European countries, Middle Eastern countries, including Turkey and Syria, and also European countries such as Nord, such as Norway, Denmark. So tens of the countries, so their nationals are now on that ship and trying to come to here, and you can check the are expecting them to be here. So you can see that here, the frantic force are on the way to welcome and to shelter them. You can see that the ambulances are here. We have seen the medical teams are making their final preparations to receive these people, the more tired people, because on the other side of the sea, so the, 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 the rapid support forces, the paramilitary rapid support forces, forces and Sudan's army, which were supposed to protect Sudanese people, are now fighting each other. And there are thousands of people who are caught in that crossfire. And now around 2,000 of them are about to arrive here. But today, there has been also another American ship, a ship which uh, anchored in the Islamic port of Jeddah, and it carried around uh, uh, more than 200 people. Not only American, 63 of them were American nationals, but the rest were the foreigners. So it's that the ships are, are, are arriving here. So far, Saudi Arabia has evacuated around uh, more than 6,000 people. And they say that these wars are still going to continue. Those who are going to arrive today are going to be provided a hotel, and also they are going to be provided with a one-month one residence visa as well. So they are going to be provided for uh, with shelter as well. However, after that, it's unclear what's going to happen to them because the scale of the people, the best other communities that are coming here now, they're talking about thousands, but that number is, is a kind of fear to, 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 to pass to the seas. They did the more than tens of the thousands, and then it's going to be a serious place. However, here, the Saudi officials, I think, mean, talking to their quite concerned that they say that any crisis in this region will destabilize okay. the whole region, particularly the security of African, Africa, born is, is quite important for them. That's why they're very much conscious now. All right, Russell, uh, back with you as that ship arrives and uh, people begin to disembark. Uh, thanks very much indeed in the meantime.